So, still in uh, uh, chapter three of uh, this book, and I'm in the third video. This is going to be just a comment on 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 something that that I have uh, talked about before, namely that the distinction between uh, Yosef Bellum and Yosef in Bello is quite controversial. This distinction between justice, uh, uh, you know, for war and uh, justice in war. That a lot that Walter makes it. He says it's a, a logical distinction. And then a lot of philosophers have since then uh, challenged this, this distinction, saying it's not a real distinction. Now, Walter does address it in, in, in this chapter a, a little bit, um, and it is a foreshadowing of later arguments that are going to resurface. So in some ways, there's nothing new under the sun. A lot of the later philosophers that challenged were picking up old challenges to Walter that Walter does uh, address to a certain uh, a, a degree. And I, what I want to do here is just kind of point out that it starts to bottom out um, in very fundamental intuitions. And let's see if I can make that a little bit clearer. Um, so at the time of the Nuremberg trials, right, uh, you know, not too long after the, the Second World War, the British prosecutor, the chief British prosecutor at Nuremberg, he says something like this, which is basically against Walter's view. Uh, of, of splitting Yosef Bello and Yosin in Yosef Bellum and Yosin Bello. That is, the British prosecutor said something like this: Look, killing combatants is is uh, uh, just is is justifiable only if the war is legal. Um, now he put it in. Not surprisingly, the prosecutor used uh, like legal language. But basically, what he's saying is that you can justify the killing of combatants, um, but it's only if that it's necessarily th that the war itself I is a legal one. We can parse this out a little bit differently. What he's getting at here is that the bad side, right, if the war is illegal, the bad side has no justification for killing uh, those on the other side. Um, so uh, the war was illegal. It was perpetrated by uh, uh, Nazi Germany. They started it. It's a war of aggression. It's illegal. And so the, 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 the German regime, the Nazi regime, uh, did not have any justification to the killing of Allied soldiers. In other words, uh, killing in this illegal sense, so, so the, side, the bad side, and illegal, the immoral side, right, has no justification. So the Nazis have no justification for killing Allied soldiers, but uh, the good side, you know, again, according to the con kind of conventional logic, but that's too contestable, uh, but we'll just put that aside. But the, the Allied side, supposedly on the good side, the, you know, they're fighting uh, a, a war against this aggression. Um, uh, uh, they, they have justification for killing uh, German soldiers. Okay, and so he says that killing in this illegal sense, so what the German uh, side was doing, the Nazi side was doing, is this killing in this illegal case, in this illegal concept. This is murdering, um, and it's really the same as murdering, killing, done by lawless robber bands, right? So in other words, he says, look, you know, uh, that the, the Nazi regime in its killing of allied soldiers was just, was just murdering them, right? But not the other way around. The allied soldiers fighting back and all that is is not murder. So if you're a kind of a rough analogy, you know, if you're attacked by, you know, a killer who, who and, and, and they they murder you, but if you were to kill them maybe in self-defense, we might not call that murder if you were to done it, if you were to do it in self-defense. So that's the idea. So this notion that, uh, uh, so clearly this is violating, like saying no to the moral equivalency of soldiers and no basically to that 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 supposed logical distinction that Walter wants to make between Yosef Bellum and Yos in Bellum, right? And that's from out of that distinction, the soldiers are only responsible for their particular behavior, not for the very existence of the war. So they're morally equivalent, blameless. And this guy, this British prosecutor, way back, decades ago, before the philo philosophical reaction to Walter's book, decades before Walter's book, is saying, no, that's not the case. These uh, 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 one side actually doing killing could be, if it's illegal, like a robber band, just murdering. Um, okay, so uh, Walser says something like this. Well, let's think about this and let's use how we actually do reason. Now, you might say, I don't reason like this and maybe we don't do it anymore or whatever, but let's listen to what, uh, uh, what my reading of Walser. And he's saying something like this. Look, the... Uh, 
let's look at the field marshal, uh, Erwin Rommel, right? Uh, that in uh, around uh, like 1952, so there, you know, war, Rommel's doing his fighting. Um, Hitler releases an order uh, in, in like October of 1942, basically a commando order, which says that uh, you shoot your captive soldiers. So Rommel was ordered to uh, shoot captured Allied soldiers. Rommel killed a lot of Allied soldiers, but as the story goes, he burned this order. He refused to uh, kill his captive uh, Allied prisoners. He, he, would, he wouldn't do that. And Walter says we often praise him for that, right? We, we you know, we, we say, well, you know, that was good that he did that. That's a praiseworthy thing. Look, he divided Hitler. This is good. This is praiseworthy. Um, yeah, he killed a lot of Allied soldiers. Um, uh, but you know, it, it was war, and many, and he didn't, and he didn't shoot the, or kill the uh, uh, Allied soldiers that were captive because that's kind of like murder. So again, you can feel this kind of reasoning, which is where Walter might say, "Well, yeah, this is kind of this moral reality of war. This is how we talk. We often praise Rommel, so that he did this." But um, let's think about this, Rommel. If if this goes through, then Rommel. Uh, uh, you know, is, is, is kind of like a thief who breaks into a house. But is he? Okay, just put that to the side for a sec. Here's to a, a little thought experiment that, that Walter does. He doesn't do a lot of thought of experiments, but he does one here. Uh, thief one and thief two, both of them break into a house. The first thief though, he kills everyone uh, but the women and children. He won't, he doesn't kill them. So he kills a certain group, goes in, let's say kills all the guys, breaks into the house, kills all the guys, but doesn't kill the women and kids. Um, the second thief breaks into a house and kills everyone. Are they morally equivalent? Walter says no. Clearly, uh, 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 they're both immoral, but are they morally equivalent? No, 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 no. Uh, the, the second one is worse. But on the other hand, there's a rough analogy of the first one to Rommel, right? Uh, uh, Rommel does, does does kill, but doesn't kill, like, except, well, I should have written, he kills most, but not not the women and kids. Rommel killed a lot of soldiers, but not the captured ones. Is Rommel like one? Well, we praise Rommel, but we don't praise this one here. We don't praise thief one. Oh, we wouldn't praise him. We would say, you know, well, it's it's, uh, it's it's not as bad since he didn't kill everyone, but we don't praise him and say, well, he's a good thief or whatever, like we say, Rommel the good general. Um, and so, no, uh, why is that? Well, because of this, what's common with the two thieves other than the killing, it's the breaking in, right? They started it. So the, the thief one, just like thief two, he started the whole thing, he broke in, right? And so uh, he's responsible for the whole state uh, of, of the break-in, right? Just so both of them are, and then they do different things in the break-in, um, but we hold both thieves uh, responsible and we, we hold the first one responsible and refuse to give him the, uh, the praise for certain things because he's responsible for the thing in the first place, break in. Um, Rommel, again, going back to uh, Walter's view, is Rommel's a soldier, right? He, even he's a general, sure, but he didn't start the war. Um, and, and so that's why we say, well, we're not holding him uh, responsible for the analogy, like the break-in would be the war, right? The whole war is kind of analogous to the break-in. And then the behavior is uh, uh, within the break-in or within the war. Well, Rommel's not responsible for the war. Thief one is. Rommel doesn't kill uh, captive soldiers, and so we praise him. But thief two, uh, thief one uh, kills people, but we're not going to praise him for this because, again, he is responsible for this. So in, in that sense, this is explains, this kind of distinction that we make explains why we would not want to say that Rommel is no different than this guy. And since we say he's no different than this guy, then we say, look, this whole thing is not really how we reason. We do not say that because Rommel was on the bad side, that any killing Rommel uh, uh, did, and he's just like this kind of a thief. No, we can say that uh, uh, some of the killing that Rommel did is not just murder, like Rommel was not murdering allied soldiers on the battlefield in battle as if he were just like a lawless robber band. So, so in this sense, this British prosecutor raises this viewpoint and what 
Walter is saying this doesn't really fit with how we in fact reason about Rommel. Now, what, what, what I really want to bring up is not to say that, oh, Walter's got a knockdown argument or, or, or whatever, or other people have it against him, but it does show one thing that's very important I want uh, uh, you to think about when you read this kind of stuff is, uh, what's your fundamental intuition? We could say, well, you know what? Okay, maybe we do. Maybe we have in the past praised Rommel, but... Should we? Maybe we should be rethinking how we think about uh, about these issues, right? Maybe it's the case that no, uh, uh, Rommel may not be exactly like this, um, but you know he knew what he was doing. He knew that he was participating uh, in 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 the cause that uh, the Nazi machine was engaged in. So. Aren't you somehow responsible? Like, like, can can we just simply praise him? Like, wouldn't you say something like, if you know the war is unjust, shouldn't you refuse? Like, like if Rommel were to really be praised, wouldn't we say he's only going to get that praise as if he just opted out completely? He just wouldn't get involved, right? Maybe when when that war started, if uh, if he if 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 Rommel at the time would have said, I want no part of this. Right? I don't like where this is going. I don't agree with this. I'm going to completely refuse to fight. And then we would have praised them, but not to get involved knowing that it's wrong or something and then say, well, I don't do uh, uh, certain things on the battlefield and therefore I should get praised. Um, no, he should have opted out of the whole thing in the first place. So this gets into a discussion, though, what's interesting about what people know, how a state could function, whether or not uh, states could uh, function and their military systems and their defense systems would be capable of functioning if everybody were making that decision. That is, if the decision about war were not just located in a government or a, a cabinet or a leader or whatever, but it was distributed completely, um, would that be possible to have a, a functioning army? What would happen to, again, the very concept of obedience in, in an army where everybody had to be completely informed about what's, what was going on. Some writers have said in the past that um, it's better to keep the soldiers kind of innocent of what's going along and then their consciences are, are, are clean. Uh, Shakespeare talks a lot about that, you know, that our conscience is clean, uh, we fight well and uh, the, the, the duty and the burden is upon the crown, right? It's the king who uh, has the burden. And uh, some other writers on war have said, yes, keep the soldiers away from the actual reasons and, and, and everything is better. So in that sense, it's not necessarily a straightforward argument, but it's kind of a pragmatic argument that if you want the military structure to work, it can't have that everybody's at the same level of decision-making power. Um, and, and, but I mean, that's not going to go unanswered, you know, maybe, maybe more diffusion of decision-making power would be a better thing and less and lead to further, uh, a reduction of war or fewer unjust wars or something like that. So, it's not that Walter is unaware of responses to his view, because again, long before the philosophers were arguing against Walter, this British prosecutor at Nuremberg put forward a rejection of that distinction. Um, so you have to keep in mind that these things have been talked about for a while and try and follow where the arguments go, starting with Walter and even further back and where they are today. So it's a, it's a long and complicated story, but it starts to move off into epistemological questions about you know, what does it mean to really know what a conflict is in terms of its uh, ultimate morality? See you next video.